Hi, I'm John Lentz, City and State's Managing Editor, and this is Last Look. I'm joined today by Steve Cohen, former Secretary to Governor Andrew Cuomo, now a columnist for City and State. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And you're also a partner with uh, law firm Zuckerman Spader. I am. Um, Executive Vice President and Chief Administrative Officer of McAndrews and Forbes. That as well. But uh, you're now a columnist for us, um, and how do you like joining City and State? No, it's great. It's, uh, I think, a, a, a great forum and a great opportunity. Uh, to have a public discussion and to get some issues uh, out before people and um, you know more and more I think one of the things that y you need uh, given the climate in Albany is the ability to discuss uh, to talk about issues to, uh, to to vet various ways to improve state government and city government. Mm -hmm. And you're also seen as still a close associate of the governor and, and sometimes can give some insight on the Cuomo administration um, but in your latest column, you talk about upstate New York and the lack of corruption cases. Could you sort of summarize what your column touched on? Sure. You know, the thing that you always hear about corruption cases is, is first and foremost, uh, how hard they are to make the cases in, in the state system. And second of all, how uh, it always seems to be left to the federal prosecutors who have the benefit of a federal grand jury, uh, more uh, prosecutor-friendly laws. Uh, and the resources of the FBI. Uh, but, but what people seem to miss and what struck me when I sat down to think about it is that all of those cases that, that we look to with one exception, the exception being um, the, the somewhat um, curious prosecution of, of Joe Bruno, all the other cases are actually brought out of the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York and the Eastern District of New York in Manhattan and Brooklyn. And there have been no prosecutions out of the Northern District of New York, again, other than Bruno, uh, and yet it's the Northern District of New York that has its primary office in Albany and as well as in Syracuse. Uh, and there are reasons for that, but it is a stark reminder that prosecuting corruption cases, as far as Albany is concerned, is an out-of-town event. Mm -hmm. And that's Preet Bharara in the Southern District, right? Yeah, and Loretta yes. Lynch in the Eastern District. And they've both really made a name for themselves over the last few years. Yeah, I, and I think, you know, Loretta Lynch is returning. This is her second stint as U.S. Attorney in Brooklyn. Um, Preet, uh, who had been an assistant U.S. Attorney uh, in the Southern District a few years ago, went and did a spell uh, in Washington as a, a counsel under Chuck Schumer. Um, and he is here for, for the first time, but has you know, really managed to tap into a vein of corruption cases uh, th that just keep coming and coming and coming. In fact, at one uh, press conference, he, I think, alluded to the fact that it was like Groundhog Day. Uh, and yet, you know, both of those offices have been able to get, um, you know, traction on doing major cases against um, elected officials who primarily are serving in the legislature uh, in Albany. And Richard Hartunian, he's the guy up in the Northern District. Mm -hmm. And you seem to, in your column, say, you know, you don't blame him so much. Maybe it's more of the background, the lack of experience. Yeah, look, I don't think you can blame him. I think he is uh, a career public servant who has done, you know, a, a more than credible job, especially when it's come to um, drug cases, gang cases, border issues. And those are the things that, that have for all sorts of reasons, been the bread and butter of the Northern District of New York, which includes, I think, 32 counties, has the Canadian border. Uh, it, it is a, a large geographic area. Uh, and the truth is, he has a much smaller budget than Southern District and Eastern District. He has fewer prosecutors. And what ends up happening in a U.S. Attorney's Office is, and I should say I served as an assistant U.S. Attorney um, f in the Southern District of New York from 1991, uh, to 1998, and, and my focus also was, was primarily on gang cases. But what happens in U.S. attorney's offices, the cases tend to perpetuate themselves. You get into a line of cases, you become an expert, you develop that expertise, and, and it carries forward. And there just hasn't been in recent times um, aggressive corruption prosecutions in Albany. And again, you can't fault the current U.S. attorney, but you can say, you know, geez, isn't there a way to go out and find somebody to serve in that position, and uh, the current U.S. attorney has now been there almost, I think it's coming up on four years, but to find somebody who is going to really focus on those corruption cases. Now, 
you know, what, what people say is, yeah, but it's hard to turn that office around and they've been doing what they've been doing for so long. But, but the truth is, and you've seen this other places, there was a time when the New York State AG's office, which is frankly ill-suited to corruption cases, um, didn't do any. Uh, or frankly, didn't do any Wall Street cases. And yet, you know, the, the right leader in an office at the right time with the right focus can really make a huge difference. And, and the biggest example I give is what happened in Chicago, where you know, to the Northern District of Illinois, there had really been you know, what is you know, once again in, in Chicago, a perennial, you know, the perennial corruption scandal. And the senator there um, you know, said, uh, I'm, instead of gonna doing what we typically do, which is find a prominent Chicago lawyer to be the U.S. attorney, I'm going to do a nationwide search and I am going to find uh, somebody who is experienced, aggressive, knows how to build cases, uh, and is willing to come here with a mandate to do these cases. And he went out and he got Pat Fitzgerald, who at the time was an assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern District, primarily doing terrorism cases at the time. He had had a background in, um, in organized crime cases. But Pat Fitzgerald had been around a long time and had done a lot of cases. And, and lo and behold, um, when Pat Fitzgerald becomes the U.S. Attorney in the Northern District of Illinois, th there is a litany of cases that I think is probably unparalleled uh, in, in just about any U.S. Attorney's office and certainly in the Northern District of Illinois. Uh, he just stepped down recently and you, know, you go and look and, and the, sort of the litany of what he did is, is, is impressive and, and it holds hope for, for what you can do in the Northern District of New York. Mm -hmm. And I believe even Preet Bharara in the, in the Southern District, which is more well-funded, uh, has recently talked about federal budget cuts and how, you know, maybe there is even a problem there that there's not enough resources. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, look, y you always struggle in a, in, in a public office in, in, you know, difficult times um, with how to fund things. I was the um, uh, chief of staff in the New York State Attorney General's office when, you know, the budgets were cut dramatically beginning in 2008. It's a management problem. It is not insurmountable. Now, you know, Preet's point is that that has always been, U.S. Attorney's Office tend to be thinly staffed offices, and he has a point. But what you're not going to see, um, regardless of what, uh, what Preet says, is you're not going to see a drop off in those cases. Uh, they're committed to them, and they're going to do them. I think Preet was talking largely about the broader ability to bring innovative cases, especially in the area of Wall Street and, um, and the forfeiture actions that they have done. Switching gears a little bit, um, staying with corruption, but at the state level, the big news this week is the Moreland Commission. It's out with its preliminary report, I believe. Um, did you have a chance to look at that at all? Any any thoughts? Any anything surprise you there? Yeah, it, it is. I, I have not read it thoroughly. It came out uh, yesterday evening. Um, it is a long report. I, I think that. You know, there, there aren't any great surprises. I don't think there are, there are great surprises to be had um, in the area of corruption uh, in New York. Um, you, know, you, you may have a new vignette, um, but, but the basic theme and the basic story, unfortunately, remains the same. Uh, I, I think that if there were any surprises in it, um, I was surprised by some of the proactive nature of some of the the information that was offered. You know, to me, the, the, the best and highest use of something like the Moreland Commission is collecting information, putting it together, um, providing uh, what is really the brief for uh, the need for legislative reform. Um, and, and although you know, I think it's commendable that there was a the notion of you know, following up on some investigations, uh, the truth is those will have to be referred out to other people ultimately. And you know, the reality is you have 62 DAs in this, uh, in this state, uh, four U.S. attorneys, um, and a number of other investigative bodies. I don't think um, the great use of Moreland is in, in feeding those prosecutors' office. I think the best and highest use is, is what a large portion of their report focused on, which is the kind of legislative reform you need, how to go about it, and what the rationale is for it. And one of the big things that's been discussed uh, since this report came out is there's this dissent over public financing. I think there are seven members um, that, that wrote that they don't think that public financing should happen. Um, and it, it seems like that'd be a tough political thing to get through the state Senate. Yeah, I think it, 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 it is and has been uh, a, a very tough issue uh, to move um, certain members of the legislature on. You know, I think the, def the dissent really is the product of the fact that, that public financing, you know, more than anything is a policy issue. 
um, and it is not an easy policy issue. Uh, you, you can see plenty of places where public financing exists, uh, and yet there are still corruption issues. Uh, you know, I think Bill Hammond makes that point in the, in the Daily News today, uh, th that it certainly is not only not a panacea, there's an argument that says public uh, financing m may, in some ways, make the problem worse. And I, I don't know what the answer is. I you know, generally think public financing is a good thing, uh, but I think what you're seeing in that dissent are uh, a number of the members of the commission saying, you know, this is really a policy debate that, that we really shouldn't be weighing into. You know, what we're trying to do is point out the areas of, of legislation that really would make a difference immediately. Um, but other than that, it seemed as if the commission was um, speaking with one voice. Steve Cohen, thanks for joining us today. Real pleasure. Thank you. And that's it for Last Look. To check out other Last Look videos, go to our website, cityandstateny.com.